Flexi is such a versatile product. Let me show you a few ways you can use it to expand your business. All right, you've taken the time to invest in various kinds of shop equipment. You've got a wide format printer, a vinyl cutter, a laminator, and those are the basic instruments that you're gonna to use to create what we call applications. Applications would be things like soft signage using textiles, vehicle wraps, window graphics, banners, contour cut decals, gallery wraps. There's all kinds of things you can do in the business. But to get the design correct and to output it to that equipment, you need a design and production software. That software is Flexi. Now to produce those projects or applications, you're gonna need a software that can do a number of different kinds of functions and different design features. For instance, you gotta have text layout. Flexi has one of the best ones out there. You can design in Flexi using smart objects because you're gonna to need to do some editing. Well, smart objects allows you to do smart editing and it saves you time. Vectorizing and tracing, you gotta take bitmaps that are low resolution and uh, convert them into uh, higher uh, soft resolution or perhaps even vectorize them into outlines. You can do that in Flexi. Bitmap editing, they're great tools in, in Flexi and it's also compatible with Adobe plugins. So you can even enhance the bitmap editing features of Flexi. Of course, we support all the vinyl cutters out there, all the wide format printers. So that's gonna run your equipment. But we also have uh, give you access to cloud design elements. There's a store you can go to. It's part of the cloud features of Flexi that allows you to download things like templates for uh, paint protection or window uh, tint or uh, many, many other kinds of design elements you might need in your particular uh, design that you're creating. And of course, you gotta be able to interact with your customers, so included in Flexi also is an artwork approval tool so that you can communicate with them, show revisions, and really get the job done that the customer is expecting. Let's show you a quick tour, give you a quick tour of, of Flexi so you kinda get a feel for what Flexi is all about. So let's take a quick tour of Flexi. What it, my goal here is to get you started as fast as possible. So it's not ultimate detail for that. You can use the training DVD. But what we're, our goal here is to just show you how to open files, type some text, work with some bitmaps, generally how to use the program for designing purposes. So let's get started. So the very first thing you should do is just get familiar with the Flexi interface. Just take a look at it. Go all the way around the edges. Look at the swatch table on the bottom, the zoom tools on the left. Uh, here's some shapes and text tools at the top, some more icons. You know, you can turn things on and off with these icons up here. For instance, there's the cloud, turn it off and on, right? And that brings me to the cloud features over here on the right hand side. Go through the menus, you know, to see what's in there. Just kind of take a tour of it yourself. Now, if you're familiar with Illustrator or Corel or something like that or some other programs, you can actually go to the file menu and choose workspace and change the interface. So if you want it to look like Adobe Illustrator, you just click on Adobe here and it'll change the look of the interface as well as the shortcut keys. So it's more familiar to you. Those of you that are uh, old Gerber users, change it to the Omega interface, right? Or if you're a, a Corel user, change it to the Corel interface. So that way it becomes more familiar. It's easier to work with that way. But uh, for most users, you're just gonna leave it on the default interface, which is gonna be just the basic interface here, and just become familiar with it. Let, you should also recognize that when your mouse sits on any icon or any space, you generally get a help for that. So take a few minutes now and just become familiar with that interface. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is just show you how to open and save files. So you can do that from the file menu, you know, open over here, save here, or there's an icon right here on the uh, side, upper left-hand side there. So let's open a file, click open. Uh, it, you can go anywhere on your server, on your PC, wherever you can find files, and the initial type is all readable. So that means that any of these formats it will find. Now, if you're searching for a specific format, like JPEG files, let's just say, you could actually choose that and then it would limit itself to finding just JPEG files, right? Now, 
uh, th these file formats in here come in all types of different versions, right? Version one, two, three, that kind of thing. So which version is compatible with Flexi and, uh, and, and so forth. Well, to get help there, just go to the help menu and choose help topics. That will start up the help menu uh, in your regular browser. And basically what's going to let you do is go down, way down here at the bottom where the appendix is, there's supported file format. So I'm going to click on that. And this is actually a really good page to print out. It, it actually shows you the file format. It says Adobe Illustrator. Extension, it gives you the extension of that file format. It gives you the import version, so up to CS6, export as CS6. Same thing with Photoshop and so forth. So as this is a uh, change, as the file format import and export versions change, then you'll be able to see which uh, version you've got there. You also have old Flexi files here, Flexi 5, 6, 7, 7.5. Those can be opened, right? So you may have to uh, look through this to make sure you have the right format as well as the right uh, version in order to open that file. So let's close that up. All right, so let's go ahead and open a file. I'll just grab one off of here. We'll just look at uh, maybe uh, one of these right here. All right, so there's a nice file right there. So, you know, you make your changes to it and so forth. Now you need to save it. So I'm going to click File and Save, and it would save over the same name, or I can uh, choose Save As. And Save As would then allow me to rename it. But notice the file type here is just Flexi FS or PD. Those are Flexi formats. That means another Flexi user could open those files, right? So let's, uh, let's actually work with text for a few moments here. I want to teach you some simple ways to work with text. Remember, this is just a general way of working with it. For details, you'll want to invest in that training DVD with hours of training on there for you. Okay, so a couple of places you can find text options. Where's up here in the menu, there's all the text options here. We won't go over all of these. We will touch on barcodes and the new QR code capabilities built into Flexi. And then on the left hand side you'll see a text icon and there's a small little arrow on the top here. If you hold the mouse button down that actually gives you all the text options out here. Okay. Now to uh, give me some more room to work with I'm just going to turn off the cloud features just for a little more extra room there. And let's click on the regular text. Just click on T for text and I'm going to click on the screen and type some text in. All right, so I typed in some text there, and I noticed uh, right away here, all of a sudden there's a squiggly red line under the word what's supposed to be training. And believe me, I do know how to spell that, and I'm glad you're getting the training. But anyway, uh, if I right click on that, when you see that kind of squiggly line, it means I've misspelled the word. Flexi will automatically spell check. So right click on it. It's going to give you some suggestions. If it's a proper name, you could actually add it to the dictionary. But we know it's supposed to be training. Click on that, and it corrects the spelling. That's pretty easy. Now the way Flexi works when you're making changes to text, whether you're changing font style or whether you're changing uh, justification and so forth, is you have to select what you want to change. So if I go in here and try to select this paragraph of text and I skip that letter T, everything will change except the letter T. See if I change the size, the T stays the same. So that's not a good thing. You want to be sure you select everything that you want to change. So I'm going to work with the entire uh, grouping of text here. We'll uh, expand it just a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. And we'll, let's make a few changes. You can change the font style to whatever font style that you want. Change that back to whatever font style that you need. You just change it as many times as you want uh, as long as it's selected, right? It's using true type fonts, so you can actually use some of the true type capabilities in here, like uh, italics and bold and, and whatever it is that you need to do to make that text look right. Again, if you look in Design Central here, you'll see that little pop up helper is happening there. So, character width is included, uh, character slant, uh, tracking, uh, vertical offset. And then I notice line spacing is grayed out. And that's because there's a little arrow here. It's set to automatic. If I want to change that, I go to specify, and then I'm in control. 
but again it, it's based on what you select so be sure you select that if I go to the next tab it's you know justification there's center justify right justify uh, when I click on full justify it pops up a, an options menu which is covered fully in the training DVD but uh, you, you, it's not difficult to use I'm gonna click left justify again there's word spacing here right you can space the words a little bit if you want to I want to show you something too that you need to be careful about right here it's called text right to left a lot of folks uh, mistake that for mirror that is not mirror that is really for languages that read from right to left so don't mistake that for mirror you'll be a little embarrassed if you cut that out and or print it out in that way okay so that's one way of working with text another way of working with text click the arrow tool select your text and then just click on the A tab and what that does is that opens up these little node points throughout the text here. I'm going to move Design Central out of the way because this is really a way of designing with text using uh, visual effects. Again, what do all these little dots and X's mean? If you let your mouse sit there, it says tracking on that one. That's a way of changing the spacing between the letters. Again, visual. Here's a line spacing, right? Here I'm going to click on this uh, node point right in front of the eye and I'm going to move it with my mouse and everything moves. Okay, So you can get really uh, precise in your changing of, of lettering and text. Now uh, if you look at this on X, I'm going to move these two letters here, these two lines that is. You notice they're both moving. I'm going to hold my control key down and watch. It only moves the one line. Or if I hold my shift key down, it moves just the one line. Because sometimes what I'm trying to do is maybe put a logo in this area right here and I don't want it to be center justified or right justified I just want to move the text over so it goes around a logo something like that same thing is true actually when you're moving this up here you know moving everything past that when I hold the control key down it moves just the one letter shift key moves that one letter right so I can literally move just one letter if I have to, if I'm trying to sort of uh, adjust the kerning between letters uh, because I don't like the way it looks. So again, use the, the T for text to either select it and make changes or use the arrow tool and then select the A tab on your design central and make changes visually. One uh, couple other things here quickly. Uh, let's type in a website name, okay? Let's go back to regular text and we'll type in a website. Great place to go to, by the way, if you need additional assistance. But I've got uh, got this on here. Now, remember that squiggly line is uh, misspelled. I know that's the website name. I could right click on it and say just add that to the dictionary. That way, it, you know, I, next time I type it, it'll spell check on that word. And that may be something I want to do. Uh, in any case, what I want to show you here is from the text menu, you have the new uh, QR codes, which is kind of neat. I'm going to take that website right there change it into a QR code box and again if you have a smartphone with you you could actually uh, use your uh, QR code reader on your smartphone take a picture of that and it will take you right to that website so that can be a nice little addition QR code that you could add to some of your visual uh, graphics out there we're going to talk a little bit about uh, bitmaps now and uh, they are a special case uh, they're not vector artwork vector artwork was like creating shapes or text or something like that bitmaps are an entirely different kind of, of object this bitmap for instance is a photograph of a of a young boy when I click on that bitmap in design central it switches over to the properties for that particular bitmap you can see that it's about 32 by 48 so it's a very big bitmap the third tab over tells me that this bitmap is an RGB image and that it's 72 pixels per inch. So that's the resolution of the image. Uh, the, the last tab actually tells me that in color management for this bitmap, it's got a, an sRGB embedded profile in it. Now, all that may not make much sense to you. And, and, and for color printing, we'll get to that later. It's going to make a lot of sense. But be aware that Design Central gives you a lot of information about a bitmap. Now, working with bitmaps, uh, if I work with this bitmap uh, and I zoom in on it, there's a great little zoom tool over here on the left-hand side. This is this little one-to-one -one actual zoom. If I click on that, by the way, that blows the bitmap up to physically the size that it would print. So in other words, 
when I look at this bitmap now and I, and I go and look at the face and all that I can notice that there's not very much pixelizing on the image. This is going to print really well at this large size like this. All right. I'm going to go to uh, open up a really bad looking file here. This is something that uh, in the training DVD you'll actually see some really good uh, close examination of this. But take a look at this image. This is really a bad poor quality image. Um, again, I can take that image and when I vectorize this uh, I would probably use something like this Bezier feature. And basically it skips all that halo and all the other stuff in the back and I'll move the bitmap out of the way. This is the finished product. I mean literally this is traced image and it's really accurate. You can see it's smoothed out. It, even though it was a lot of jagged lines on the edge here, it actually smoothed them all out. And uh, if I zoom in on there and then I just uh, use my editing tools to kind of look at the points, it doesn't put in like billions of points either. So it actually did a really good job of, of tracing an image that was poor quality. So when you have poor quality images like that, especially black and white, uh, in your bitmap menu where you have your tracing, I suggest the Bezier. Now, there's other methods in here. Auto trace, there's center line, picture cut, enhanced curves, enhanced corners. All of these are different methods for tracing bitmaps. But they, that's kind of an overview of bitmaps, kind of gives you an idea of what you can do to uh, create and use bitmaps within Flexi. It's just that easy with Flexi. Now if you want more extensive training, just go to our store and click on the software training icon where you'll find a DVD with over 10 hours of Flexi training. Thank you for watching. Guess what? It's just that easy with Flexi.